Hello, it's Sandy, and I'm back at the Baby Lock Solaris 3, working on video 3 of this project where I'm doing edge-to-edge -edge quilting of this quilt. And I have two other videos before this, so look at my channel to see uh, if you want to watch the other videos. The first one is uh, it's a setup kind of things that I did beforehand to prepare and how I programmed the machine. The second one was the first row doing the first four hoops. And I'll put a link to that first video in case you need to start at the beginning somewhere in here. And uh, if not, then this video is going to be stitching out that fifth hoop and then the last hoop on the far right of the top row. So I've already rehooped it. I've already pulled through the fabric so that I'm trying to match up with this ending stitch of the previous hoop. But pretend I had turned off my machine or uh, it's a new day and I wanted to restart where I left off. So I'm going to go into embroidery and then I'm going to go into uh, my save designs. I'm going to press this first one because that was the quilting project with the 30 hoops. And now I'm going to press this first button, which is the 30 hoops, because I don't want to do those other individuals. Those are not machine guided instruction led. It's not the process where the machine guides you. It's this first one. And so I'm going to say set. And now we're going to have to advance through a couple of screens. We got to get to the embroidery screen to get to where I left off. I left off. I want to start off at frame five. So I'm just going to press OK to get through these initial screen screens and the, it's going to move, which is a good thing because it looks like I have some um, safety pins to remove. I'm not going to do anything until I get to this screen. I'm just getting past these screens where it's telling you to line things up. Just ignoring them and then I want to get to this plus minus screen. Here it's going to ask you for the segment. That's the frame. So I'm going to advance that till I get to number five. And that's where I will say okay. And then it will take me back into the machine guided instructions, which I've already rehooped. I've already moved the fabric to the left. So I'm going to press OK. It's, it's telling me, you know, move the pattern keys so that I line up with the ending mark. I'm going to do that. It advances to that part and I can see how close I am. So I'm going to just follow that, you know, instructions that I showed you in the last video. Move it over. And up there and then I've lined it up now I'm going to press OK now it's telling us to use the rotate keys if it looks like the angles off so we'll do that it advances to the next screen and now I'm going to just use the buttons down here to move the advance the screen or the for the frame and it's going across and it looks like it's stitching within the frame i'm gonna pull this just a hair now if i compare this side to this side it looks good if i if it was angling up i could push the key that would push the angle down but when you're doing that you want to keep your eyes along this edge you can run the frame move the frame over to the left hand side you know over to this side make sure it looks straight as you're moving the frame up and then as long as it looks the same from here to here you're good but if you advance that frame push the the um angle down just make sure you don't angle it too much so that you would go into your previous stitching and you can do that when you move the screen like this you can check so I'm going to press OK because I think that looks good and I'm going to let it stitch out this one. Eh. 
in. I don't know where my scissors is, but I like to clip that thread. One moment, I'm gonna get the scissors. Looks like we lined up great again. Get the purple thing in case I need to smooth out the fabric. Yeah, so the biggest thing to remember if you need to shut down your machine is mark off where you want to start. Like what frame is your next starting point? Because if you put in, if I put in number six, then that would make this part be off. It would be stitching number six here when I'm really in number five. And it already knows the measurements of the width and the length of the quilt. So you want to make sure you make a note of the frame where you left off. So that you can go back to that frame like I showed you bypassing those instruction screens to get to the embroidery screen where you can get to the plus minus keys so that you can change the segment which is really the same as the, the embroidery frame like what frame are you in and you can if you forget to mark it down you can look at the back of the quilt and see you know when you're matching up this these marks um the previous spine of stitching to where it starts off it ties a knot in the back you can look at the back and count the knots just to make sure You know, if you actually were concerned about, I was just thinking this, about hitting the edge of the fabric on the side of the top, I guess we could raise the foot a little more if we were concerned. It, you know, if we didn't tape it down, we might want to try that. Or just tape it down and not take the chance. If you like what I'm doing with these videos, put a comment in this video and subscribe. Give the video a like. And I'm hoping that when I get done with this quilt, I can move on to some fun IQ designer projects. But I want to start with the IQ scanning. Well, that would be fun to start with because I haven't done... I've done scanning where you're trying to, like line up something on for embroidery regular embroidery but i want to learn more about using the scanning feature for um creating your own designs i know that you need embroidery software to scan and digitize pictures like photos and stuff like that i don't i know the machine can't do that but it can do you know some simple kind of scans can do some of that I and mean, it can do a lot more than what I know because I haven't really studied that yet that's the next part of my journey right now I'm finishing this machine embroidery edge to edge quilting for this quilt once I finish all the edge to edge embroidery then I'll true it up create the binding attach it to the sides and it will be done. It's going to take me a little while to do it and I'll probably stick some embroidery projects in there because I'm always doing something for somebody for fun. that mental note that this foot lands about right around in here up and around the middle I, know, I would say the top third was helped in my mind when I was pulling the fabric through it's kind of similar to here it's, it's about from here to here is about the same as you know 
from here to here. Well, it's a little bit farther. So, but it's just another mental note that I can make. So it's telling me embroidery is finished. Okay, to connect the next pattern, I'll say okay. Telling me to pull the hoop to the right. I'll pull the hoop to the right, the fabric to the left. Boy, am I off? see I think I might be a little low but we'll see because I think from looking at my top I had like an inch and a half that showing okay and then so I'm pulling this to the side taking out the pins so it looks like we're at the far right which is what I had planned for this video Squeezing the edges, pulling the fabric through, and it looks, I think that I'm close enough that if I'm not, I can move the fabric like it did before. Okay, I'm going to say okay, and it's telling me to align, use the pattern keys to align the start point with the end point, so it's just what we were doing. So I just gives you two. So we got to line it up to there. So once again, I'm using these keys and I'm going up and over because I'm taking this cross is lining up with the end of the previous stitching. And so I think we're good. Just making sure everything's flat, squeeze at the top and the bottom so I don't hit my foot or needle. Okay, so I'm gonna say okay, it's matched up. Now it's telling me to use the rotate key, so I'm gonna check the, check the angles. And one more screen. This is what I was talking about. Gonna have to back you up. So use the rotate skis, keys and the size keys to adjust the angle and the size of the pattern while keeping an eye on the edges of the pattern. So once again, we're checking to make sure that our angle across the top looks good, that the design is not going on an angle. And if it is, we're gonna adjust that. But another thing we're doing since this is the right edge is we're going to either elongate it or shorten it because we're at the far right edge. So I will show the, those buttons. like zoom out in between those screens you might have to zoom your own screen so these are the angle keys like we used before these are the keys that will push the, the design elongate the design outward or inward and um, we have to figure out what our design is doing but also at the bottom these keys um, you can either push it up or down so we're going to be using either this one or this one and this these keys will advance the frame so that we can check the alignment after we've done that so i'm going to take you back over to here okay so this is the far right side the far right corner is going to go off the edge so what i'm going to do is use that screen I better show you this button because it's new. This is the button we're going to use to push the design to make it smaller and fit it into that square. So I'm going to press that now. And hopefully you can see it move over. Okay, now because I'm over, I can use these advanced keys to see if my angles are good. Okay, that looks good so far. I'm gonna go back because I wanna make sure the design is not going off. It should because the line, now the line is going straight down. We can check that all the way down. Okay, it's starting to come out. Let's see how it looks down there. 
It's okay. Actually, it is pushed out. So I think we want to push the angle in. So I'm going to do that. See how it jumped over? I'll push it out. That's out. I'll go in. Okay. Now I'm going to check this again. And go up. Up. Oh, I don't like that it's this high. So I'm going to push it back down. Yeah, I went to... There we go. And I'm going to do... Just trying to get this angle right it's a little bit off hmm wish I could reset this okay I see I see all right so if I wanted to go down let's see how that looks That looks good. Over. Make sure that that's still on the edge. Okay. We'll go to the middle. That still looks good. Well, that looks not bad. But let's see across. Okay, I need to push it up. Up. That's better. Much better. So you'll know when you finagle with this, you know, how everything fits looking okay. But that's how you use those keys. So it allowed us to push the design or shrink the design in this way, squeeze it together so that it fits between the two points in this frame. And the top and the bottom I haven't had to use. I was using the angle keys and I was using the, I think they call them the size keys because the size of the design had to be shrunk to fit inside the square. Not by much, but it had to be changed. To fit otherwise I would have been sewing off of my fabric now when you're not using the machine guided instructions I know when I was took the class at our local sewing store the sewing source of Lake Villa Illinois um, we did have to stitch off the edge and we had to control where it stitched more so it was definitely more of a manual process. At least this way it lets you let the machine do it. You give it the measurements and once you give it the measurements it tells you how many hoops you need to re um, reframe for restitch and then it should automatically figure that out and fit it, allow you to fit it within Across all the frames across the top. I bet the stitching still looks good. And this will be the last video for the top row. And the next video will be me pushing the fabric up and moving over to the left to do the next row, the second row. This is frame six, so that will be frame seven.
So I'm going to be making a note. That's where I need to start when I restart up my machine. Because I will go back to find that frame like I showed you. If you physically turn off your machine, you'll have to take it, your embroidery hoop out of the, the arm because when it starts up, you know, it will tell you it's going to move and you probably should take it out if you're going to turn off the machine, if that's going to happen. And when I do that, I hold it by the top or by the frame itself, I don't like to put a whole lot of pressure because I don't want to change or stretch it since it's already made the little marks to show me where I'm going to line up the second row. And if I load these tonight to YouTube, these videos, then I will work on the next row the next day. I'm going to probably file them all under the edge-to-edge -edge quilting. Oh, did it break? No. Okay, I thought I heard something. Folder at YouTube's, at my YouTube site. We're in minute four. So we're almost done. If I see feedback out there that you guys want to continue to see more of me stitching the second row, then I'll do that. I'll film it and I'll put it out there. Otherwise, I think I'm going to... The next video will be me lining up and stitching out a few frames of the second row. And probably that will be it for the, the next video. And then... So this time it's making two arcs here, um, as you see. Then the, I could just wait to do the following video till I get to the bottom, and that's where I could show you how to, how it will ask you if you want to change the size of the frame when you get to the bottom because it might need to be lengthened or shortened. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, give it a like, subscribe, make a comment. Let me know what you want to see while I'm doing this edge-to-edge -edge quilting. Thank you very much. Have a good day.